This is a short video that is designed to review the CT chest findings in COVID-19. And we're gonna get to it right away by showing you cases. And we're gonna define basic terms for the beginners as we go. So early on in COVID-19, usually in about the first four days or so, you classically are gonna see a bilateral process with ground glass opacities that's most frequently posterior and peripheral in distribution. The ground glass opacities have often been noted to be rounded in nature. So let's review what we just said. So bilateral in both lungs, ground glass. So this is an example here of a rounded ground glass opacity. So ground glass just means an opacity that does not obscure the underlying vessel. So you can see the vessels through this opacity. This is a ground glass opacity. And as I mentioned in COVID-19, they've often been observed to be rounded. So if I scroll through this case here, we have bilateral rounded ground glass opacities. As things start to progress around four to eight days or so, you're gonna to start to see more crazy paving. And that's what we're showing here. And so crazy paving refers to this pattern with septal thickening on top of a background of ground glass opacity. Also notice in this case that there are bilateral infiltrates with crazy paving that's predominantly peripheral and posterior. And there are a number of other locations with more rounded uh, involvement as well. The observation was made by some radiologists that we're often seeing this pattern or sometimes seeing this pattern called the reverse halo appearance or the atoll sign um, in patients with COVID-19. And that involves uh, opacities or infiltrates with more peripheral high attenuation and lower attenuation centrally. So we see that bilaterally here. And we often see this reverse halo or atoll sign in patients who have organizing pneumonia. And although this isn't pathologically proven, that could suggest that organizing pneumonia is the pathologic response that we're seeing uh, to this infection. And so again, notice in this patient too, there are bilateral ground glass opacities. In this case, we have crazy paving and our reverse halo sign we talked about and other rounded opacities throughout the lungs as well. As things continue to progress, peaking around 10 to 13 days, you often get full-blown consolidation. And as shown here, consolidation is essentially just an infiltrate where you can't see the vessel uh, through it. So this is an example of an area of uh, consolidation in this uh, particular patient. And so oftentimes we're seeing combinations of these findings. It's not so uh, stepwise as, as we've been presenting it. So in this patient, uh, we have areas of ground glass change or some crazy paving as well. Uh, we have areas of consolidation as I showed you earlier. And even here we have a little bit of a reverse halo type of appearance here as well. And although we say it's most commonly bilateral, it can be unilateral. So this is a patient who had COVID-19 and you notice that it's predominantly in the right lower lobe here. We have areas of clear uh, crazy paving here, areas of ground glass change down here as well. And the left lung is relatively spared. So this one happened to be more of a unilateral process, but the vast majority are gonna be bilateral. When patients get really sick and get ARDS or acute respiratory distress syndrome clinically, the pathologic correlate in the lung is that of diffuse alveolar damage or DAD. The hallmark of DAD in pathology is surfactant destruction. So early on in ARDS pathologically, you see non-cardiogenic edema, inflammatory infiltrates and hyaline membranes. And oftentimes with ARDS on CT early on, we see ground glass opacities, crazy paving, consolidation that's often diffuse and bilateral. Um, and it usually has less of a zonal predilection. And 
it's important to know that the term diffuse alveolar damage is a pathology term. Um, it doesn't refer to diffuse involvement in both lungs, but oftentimes we do see a more diffuse involvement in both lungs. A study recently published in Radiology classified a bunch of cases of COVID-19 as mild or severe based on clinical parameters like respiratory rate over 30, oxygen saturation under 93%, or a PaO2 over FiO2 ratio uh, less than 300, uh, which you see with acute lung injury. And then they created a CT chest severity score and the CT chest severity score demonstrated pretty good performance, um, and it was able to identify patients with severe COVID-19 based on the clinical criteria. And the CT score itself, in my opinion, is a little bit involved, but it involves scoring 20 different areas in the lung as zero, one, or two, based on how much of the particular area is involved. But if you take just the overall idea away that is in general, as we might expect, the more area of the lung that's involved or opacified, the more likely it is to be severe. And so these images are from this paper that was published on March 30th, 2020 in radiology. Um, and so the reference is down here by Yang et al. And uh, so you see here, uh, this is a patient who had mild um, COVID-19 with bilateral rounded ground glass opacities. This patient happened to have severe COVID-19 clinically, and you can see um, that the ground glass opacities and crazy paving pattern is uh, involving a larger area of the lung. And this patient here had uh, also had a severe uh, course of COVID-19, and you can again see that a large portion of the lung is involved. And other papers exist where they try to uh, create a, a score based on how much of the lung is involved. Um, but the basic principle is, as we mentioned earlier, the more lung that's involved, uh, the more likely it is to be uh, severe. Okay, so that's it for this brief review of typical COVID-19 imaging findings. During this pandemic, please remember to socially distance wash your hands and stay safe. And regardless of the rules where you live, if you have any symptoms or test positive for COVID-19, stay home unless you're seeking emergency medical care. And if you're not sick, stay home too. Thank you. Ich bin nicht mehr so gut, aber ich bin nicht mehr so gut.